So you've chosen your car, you threw in all your upgrades, and go into your first race after you set up the car. You gun it out the gate and you start reeling in your competition and then you come up to your first difficult corner. You slow down, turn in, cut the apex perfectly and then suddenly as you get back on the power, you spin out and then everybody that you pass suddenly passes you because your tires just couldn't maintain traction. You're upset, emotions run high and then you just end up rage quitting. How many times did this happen? Build after build and you just cannot get around it. I know how frustrating this is so you know what? I'm going to give you the first solution to this problem and it deals with tuning everything around this. All because I want to give you guys the tools that you need to dominate on the track and secure those wins in Forza Horizon 5. So let's get into it. What's going on everyone? It's your favorite racing reaper Shini back with another tutorial video to help you out. In this video, I'm going to take you through everything about tuning your tires and alignment. Also, this video is pulling info from another video and a link to that video will pop up somewhere at the top here. And if you haven't watched it, I recommend... No, no, no. I insist that you go watch that video before you watch this one so you will have the basic knowledge of what's going to be discussed in this video today. A lot of the things that will be discussed in this video will be linked in a big way to that video so you really need to watch it otherwise I fear you might be in the dark about some things okay so just pause this video go watch that quickly and then come back. So first up I need to discuss two situations that may arise because I've been talking about this throughout my videos but I never really explained what these terms actually mean. So time to bring out the whiteboard again and I am talking about oversteer and understeer. So first let's talk about oversteer alright. So oversteer is when the car turns more than what you want because of a real loss of traction and as you can see in my diagram here the car is heading into the corner heading in and then suddenly because of a real loss of traction the car starts turning in towards the apex of the corner. Now with understeer the car turns less than what you want because of a front traction loss. As you can see from the diagram, the car is heading into the corner, heading into the corner and suddenly because of the front losing traction, it's heading away from the apex, all right? So that is basically what oversteer and understeer mean. And I'm going to refer to this a lot in these videos because these are the things that we need to tune out. You want the best stability and therefore the best handling from your car. and these terms will come up a lot because this is what you need to remove. Now the first screen you're going to be working with is called the tires miscellaneous screen and it's going to look something like this alright. There's a bunch of information here it's going to be four of these representing each of the four wheels on your car at the four corners of your car I should say but what you really want to see is your camber readout. Now your camber readout should always reflect in negative and I'm going to explain why in a second but what is your camber setting and how does this affect the car. Okay so your camber angle is basically your wheels vertical axis and you can see in the diagram I drew here this dude has more negative camber which is the first type and that brings on more understeer. The second type is positive camber which brings on more oversteer. But that is not what you use camber for. What you need to use camber for is to maximize your tire's contact with the ground because the thing is your camber is affected by the weight shifting of your car from the sprung weight, okay? So that's why I spoke about how you set up your suspension in the previous video and that is why I'm talking about this now. So you see as you're steering into a corner and your car's weight shifts to the outside, it's going to push that tire from being negatively cambered to being positively cambered. And what's going to happen is that tire doesn't have the best traction anymore. It's got like a thin bit as compared to negative camber when it has that much. Now what happens then? Because there's only so little traction from the tire, it's going to break traction and you're going to start understeering if it's in the front uh, where the traction has been broken or you're going to oversteer if it's in the rear where the traction has been broken. The whole point of setting up your camber is to go as close to neutral camber which is basically zero degrees movement but you still want to maintain 
some negative camber on all your wheels at all times because when it's negatively cambered that means it's always going to be able to take that force from your weight shifting onto that tire all the time and it especially happens on your outside tire and that brings me on to the next thing that affects your tire contact patch which is your caster angle and i'm going to explain that now okay so your caster angle and whew, there's a lot of information to speak about here so here is everything now you can see here there's a side view and a front view and i'm going to talk about that in a second but firstly your caster angle is based on your steering axis now time to talk about the diagram you can see this little thing here this is your suspension now if your suspension was inclined more to the front of the car it would be negative caster if your suspension was inclined more to the rear it would be positive as you can see on the board now forza doesn't use negative caster so we're not going to talk about that but instead we are going to talk about the rearward inclination of your caster angle and this affects your camber based on the pivot point which is basically where your suspension is connecting to your wheel which would be down here somewhere connecting to the wheel hub and what it does is it adds steering effort but this is only a real life scenario i don't know if it really works in the game if anybody has like a force feedback steering wheel can you try this out add on as much positive caster as possible make sure your force feedback settings are all turned in nicely and just tell me whether it becomes harder to turn the car all right the next thing is it adds front end cornering effectiveness now what this means is your front end of your car will be able to turn in much sharper you'll notice it as you're increasing the caster angle it also adds on let me just Ah, I smudged it a bit, but I'm just going to work with it for now, right? It also adds on high speed stability, basically making the car run straight as an arrow. And you really want that because when you're going up to those high speeds, you'll notice that your car doesn't like it darts in a direction and then it just keeps going on. It will be more like a quick dart and a quick dart and a quick dart. And you can just keep that stability going as long as you're going fast, all right? The last thing that it adds sorry as much as put out here but it adds increased camber to your outside wheel and that actually is a big help because like i said before as you are pushing the most neutral camber to your outside wheel you are also introducing the chance that it might go into positive camber now you don't want that and this is where the caster angle comes in you use your caster angle to solve that and there's this little diagram here all right so the car is turning to this direction and this is what positive caster will look like now some of you might be uh, sitting there and thinking that if this is what your caster angle looks like then this tire here looks like it's positive which is basically the inside tire that's in the scenario but let me tell you because there's no weight on that inside tire chances are it's going to remain negative as much as possible and i've seen this i've tested this it works okay so the next thing that affects your tire contact or more so it affects the handling of your car is your toe angle and this is another thing where there's a bunch of information to go through all right and i might have smudged away that word over there but it's okay so i have the diagram here of your car and each of the uh, tires on each corner now your toe angle is the direction of your wheels on one axis so that's either the front or the rear uh, and you always look at it when there's forward movement so there is two things here there's toe in and toe out and the easy way to remember this is which direction your tires are pointed towards with regards to the center of the car so toe in is where your tires are pointed towards the center and toe out is where your tires are pointed away from the center now toe in actually reduces oversteer and increases stability of the car and toe out reduces understeer and increases your turn in ability but one thing you've always got to remember with this is your toe angles if you adjust them they affect your top speed of your car not by big amounts but by rather small amounts but they still do make a difference to the top speed all right now most people go with a little bit of toe in 
on the rear of the car and a little bit of toe out on the front of the car and there's nothing wrong with that when they go with it in conjunction but my recommendation to you is to use one setting at a time with small adjustments okay now when i say small adjustments i'm talking like up to 0.3 of an adjustment so that's 0.3 uh, degrees of an angle reason for this is your toe angle changing this actually makes a huge difference to the car the only time that i use major toe angle changes is when i'm drifting and more on that later in another video okay in the game now and i'm using the same 370z from the last video i haven't changed anything with the alignment and for camber you're going to bring up your telemetry menu for tires miscellaneous and what you're going to focus on is your outside tires first all right you're not going to look at the inside really and firstly you're going to look at the rear right in this case that's the outside tire because of the almost banked hairpin that i'm going to be using why am i using that corner that is a very fast hairpin it's banked it's going to push that sprung weight down a little bit more and it's basically the limit of cornering capability that your car has to push out basically all right so firstly you work with the rear right and what you're going to pay attention to like i said is the camber setting or the camber readout now what you're going to look for is what is the lowest camber readout that it goes down to now don't go off road because sometimes it can make uh, your car skip well obviously it's going to make your car skip and also ignore it when your car goes over a dip you just want to pay attention to how your camber readouts show when you're on a flat tarmac surface all right so I'm going to go again and we're going to pay attention to what the camber readout on the rear tire is. And I'm not going to make any adjustments. I just want to show you what you basically need to do. So in this case, that looked like something like 0.5 on the rear, right? And that is how much uh, lower you can go on your rear camber. That is what you're going to need to do. You're going to have to reduce your negative camber on firstly your rear until you start to see positive readouts. And then you'll know from that point that you need to go a step back. And it's the same thing for the front. You're going to pay attention to that front right tire because that's the outside tire in this case. See what the lowest camber readout is. Make that adjustment until you start to see positive. And then you need to know then that you can go back. Uh, but you can increase your negative camber slightly until you don't see positive anymore and you do this both on the front and the rear now when it comes to caster angles caster angles only apply to the front because that is where your steering axis is located all right obviously so with your caster angle when you're adding that on there's two ways to do it you either look at what your camber readout is for the front wheels and what you're going to do is add that angle back on based on what you're seeing and what you want the camber to be or you can also go and add on uh, caster angle based on how much negative camber you reduced from the stock setting personally i prefer to go and look at it in the telemetry and i like to add it on that way based on what i want to see the second method it works yes but it's not a surefire way to get the car to be dialed in how you want it to and also You've got to keep in mind that at some point your caster angle can also be adjusted based on the feeling that you want from the car because remember it also gives you sharper cornering effectiveness it improves the stability at high speeds etc like i just explained all right when it comes to toe angles you can use the drivetrain of the car as a guideline like i said to adjust oversteer or understeer a rear wheel drive car is generally going to have more oversteer a front wheel drive car is generally going to have understeer and you want to adjust based on that uh, also at some point you will see that you've possibly introduced too much of a toe angle adjustment and now the car doesn't perform how you want it to so let's say on this rear wheel drive car i introduce some toe in on the rear and then the car starts to understeer that is where you would compensate for that understeer by introducing toe out on the front and it works the same for front wheel drive cars it works the same for all wheel drive cars it's just the first step that you do to change the handling of the car that is what toe angle adjustments are for 
Okay, so now that the alignment is done, it's time to move on to setting up our tire temperatures, all right, and how our tire heat is controlled at each point of a race. Now, when you're looking at your tire heat telemetry menu, this is basically what you're going to see right here. Now, you're going to see four of these diagrams across your screen representing each of the four wheels at the four corners of your car. Now, before I go on, you have to go watch part three if you haven't watched it yet. Reason being, there are three things I spoke about over there that I'm not going to speak about now for the sake of time. I cannot go over it again and again. So the first thing is the colors and what uh, temperature ranges they represent. The second thing is the temperatures based on the driving conditions. And the third thing is the temperatures based on your drivetrain of your car. Now, I cannot go over this again. It's in part three. You should go check it out because there's a wealth of information there that works in tandem with this next part of the guide based on what tire tuning represents and what we want from our tire tuning, okay? But basically all the time, you want to see that kind of mustardy yellow color. And I'm also going to explain in a bit what the different scenarios may be based on how you should see your temperatures spread out and things like that there. So give me a second. All right. So I'm going to try my best not to smudge my board this time. But now we are taking a look at the different scenarios that you are going to see that are desirable to you when you are tuning your tire pressures and here they are so firstly let's oh i already smudged my board you can see oversteer got smudged out there but anyway firstly let's take a look at the first and the best scenario which is basically your whole tire is heated up inside to out now you are going to see this sometimes but then this is where you need to look at the temperatures on the side of this diagram and then you need to make sure that the tire temperatures are going cooler from the inside to the outside all right now the next scenario is this here which is basically what i said here about the tire temperatures being cooler going from the inside to the outside but this time your tire temperature diagram is actually showing it all right and it's the same thing for number three except the outside is actually very cold and if you got this one then chances are you might have not reduced your camber as much so you can go back and check that but if you cannot fix this then this is still acceptable it will still work as long as you are not going into positive camber and you've still got some heat being generated this is okay all right now why do we tune tire pressure okay so tire heat is a real thing in forza horizon 5 they actually made it work in this game so you have to tune your tire pressure and there are three levels of tire pressure steps that i'm going to take you through okay so firstly increasing your tire pressure will give you better heat management but it will take a longer time to heat up all right and you want that sometimes because sometimes you may see your tire overheating that is where you increase your tire pressure but then you might be sacrificing the time it takes to heat up that tire, okay? So sometimes if you see your tire not heating up at all, that is where we go to the next thing, which is where you decrease your tire pressure, which basically gives you a shorter heat up time. However, it increases the chances of overheating occurring and you don't want that, all right? So it's your job to firstly find that balance between the time it takes to heat the tires up and what is the limit that the tires can take before they start to overheat all right that's your job to figure that out now if things do not seem complicated enough already time for level two okay <laughs> this is where you have to make sure that your tire pressure is actually set correctly to make proper contact with the ground all right so i've got two diagrams here now they are, they are representing under inflation and over inflation okay now under inflation if firstly if you did your alignment correctly which is why i discussed that first you can see how each next step of my tuning process is like practically leading on from one to the next basically all right so if you did that alignment tuning properly it will make your life hell of a easy at this point where you're sorting out your tire pressures so under inflation will be represented in your tire heat diagram by the middle being colder than the outside and the inside edges of your tire okay 
because basically if your tire is under under inflated it's going to have like an arch in the middle meaning that your edges are only going to be making contact with the ground and that's just how physics works okay versus the opposite side now which is over inflation if your tire is over inflated then it's going to have like a very sharp angle and because you have negative camber set only the inside edge of your tire will be making contact with the ground therefore only the inside edge is going to heat up if things are not complicated enough for you yet time to move on to level 3 okay level 3 basically your tire pressures actually affect the stability and your steering response all right now it's basically the difference between changing your tire pressures between the front and the rear tires if you increase your front tire pressure you'll get a better response and you always want a better steering response so you need to find the point between increasing your front tire pressure for the better response the correct uh, contact back to the ground and the right heat up time and the right heat management and the same goes for the rear but when you increase your rear tire pressure it reduces your oversteer but let me tell you this effect doesn't help much as compared to toe angles but it will make a difference in your life all right so with the same thing with the rear you've got to set your tire pressures right to reduce as much oversteer as possible to introduce as best heat management as possible and to also get the right contact with the ground and isn't tuning fun you know it really isn't but i'm here to make it fun and easy for you guys all right now the next thing is your tire heat and like i said you want to adjust your tire pressures using your tire heat telemetry menu but you've got to make sure that your tires heat up fast enough that they can maintain race temperatures properly enough so that they don't go into an overheating situation you want to make sure that your tire contact with the ground is good you don't have under or over inflated tires and also you want to make sure that the car behaves how you want it to so you want the right stability and you want the right steering response from the car based on what tire pressures you set all right now with all that said this car currently has semi slicks installed on it and in some cases it doesn't hold race temperatures all the time and that is basically telling me that i went too high with my tire compound and i'm going to refer you back to part three where i spoke about the tire compounds that you should use based on your class that you're building the car for how it's affected by a couple of other things i'm not going to go into too much detail because previously this video was going to be 45 minutes long and that is why i'm not taking you through a full step-by-step -step process of me actually tuning this car out i'm going to tune it behind the scenes and actually do some fun with it later on but i'm not going to take you through step by step i have faith in you guys that you guys are actually going to understand me and if you don't then you can find me in the comment section or better yet find me on discord where i'll be more active because that's just the better platform for us to engage with each other as a community like i'm aiming to build up on all right so that is basically everything that you need to do when you're tuning your tires and your alignment okay there's nothing more to it also make sure that you work with the process that i'm showing you guys sort your alignment out first then your tire pressure because if you go the other way around then you're going to be chasing your own tail you're going to go back and forth changing your tire pressure then you're going to say okay maybe my tire contact isn't right because of my camber setting but you should have done your camber setting first you should have done your caster setting after that then your toe angles and finally your tire pressure okay if you're wondering what to do next then my only suggestion to you is practice and make it perfect all right if you have a track that you know like the back of your hand and it has some benchmarking tools along the way in freedom by all means use that track and use those benchmarking tools to help you gauge whether each adjustment that you made is actually making a difference and if you don't see an improvement with those benchmarking tools like for instance you did a speed trap before you tune something and you did the same speed trap afterwards then at least make sure you're seeing a difference with the driving dynamics of the car so maybe the car corners better maybe it accelerates a bit better maybe it can exit the corner easier etc etc now with all that said 
you've also got to make sure that you leave some room for marginal error because remember we are people at the end of the day we're not perfect sometimes we are going to make mistakes i'm going to get to that eventually in this tutorial series where i can explain how to drive a bit better how to manage yourself in a race a bit better but that will come in the near future after this tuning tutorial part of the series is done all right now with all that said it is time to end but before we go i just want to tell you guys that if you're confused about anything you have any questions you don't understand something feel free to ask me in the comment section down below some of you have been doing that and i hope i'm actually helping you guys out along the way or better yet join the discord channel because one of my subscribers actually did and we worked together on some projects and i gotta say the results were amazing I mean, the guy took what I've been explaining about suspension tuning. He gave me his his share code and we worked on the car together and it came out phenomenal. And just to be more specific, it was an A-class Acura RSX. And let me tell you, this car's turning capability was shocking. Like when I say it turns in, it was like you're throwing a dart in that direction basically for sure these results work but i can help you if you need it all right with all that said it is time to end the video so ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i hope you enjoyed it if you did make sure you drop a like i'll see you guys in the next video reap out